You see that? Dang Enderman. Trying to ruin literally the last time we had a cow and now an Enderman. Well, anyways, hello everyone and welcome back to Valhelsia 3. Where there has been quite a bit of work being done and you're probably already noticing a few differences. Uh, mainly the fact that we have this very interesting tool if you're not very familiar with what mechanism is this is the atomic disassembler it is actually a relatively easy item to get if you know a little bit about mechanism uh, but basically uh, we um, in previous episodes had made up some infused alloy we actually made the energy tablet which is needed to make the wind turbine that we had made but there's two new items sitting here, which is the atomic alloy and a refined obsidian ingot. Now, this only requires one additional machine that we actually didn't have, which was the osmium compressor. So, jumping right into things, it's really not that difficult. You'll notice most of the stuff we pretty much can already get. The steel casing is very easy. It's just steel, osmium, and glass. And then the uh, advanced control circuit is literally a basic control circuit with an infused alloy. So very, very simple to jump into, and this thing is powered with uh, RF or, you know, FE energy, whatever you want to call it, and you just need to put an osmium ingot inside of it so it infuses the osmium into whatever you're using. So a few examples of this is you'll see the little tank there. Um, I've never experienced what the tank is about. Uh, if you hold shift on this, quick, you can do liquid osmium. Okay. I did not know that. Uh, but you can use this to get a uh, you know variety of different items, um, which it looks like in this case only a couple. Actually, I thought there was more, but apparently just two refined glowstone ingots and refined obsidian ingots, which is one of the items that we actually needed for the atomic disassembler. So that required refined obsidian dust, which is made in the metallurgic infuser, which we already have. Uh, it made in a previous episode, so we need uh, diamond dust or diamond, and I used, in this case, enriched diamond. So this makes it a little bit more efficient for us, tossing a diamond into the uh, enrichment chamber, which we also made in a previous episode, uh, makes this a little bit more useful in here, giving you more uses, I do believe so, uh, and with some obsidian dust, which I just put in the... Uh, Enrichment chamber as well. I believe it crushed it down into some obsidian dust giving us the refined obsidian we need and then using this inside of our osmium compressor to get the refined obsidian ingot Now some of the other things that we're going to be looking at real quick is the atomic alloy which was uh, needed here We need the enriched uh, Actually, you can use enriched obsidian. I think that's the same thing refined obsidian uh, so one of the two with a reinforced alloy, which is just some diamond, which we used the uh, diamond uh, uh, rich right there with a little bit of the infused, and that got us that. So uh, just kind of slowly making its way through. Uh, if you're new to modded, one of your biggest things uh, to learn, in my opinion, is your best friend on the side here, which is usually JEI. Just enough items or, you know, the older variant. If you're playing older versions, which is NEI, not enough items. And you might be playing a different version or a different mod pack in general, and it might be called something else. But usually, uh, if you see a bunch of items on the side here, uh, it, it means something really, really good. <laughs> it's something really great to learn. Uh, something that uh, allows you to search up items and find how to craft them or what they can be used in uh, to craft other things. Uh, so that's pretty much all we did as far as, you know, some craziness is concerned as far as crafting things. Uh, and... I moved. So we got our mine that was there, and uh, as the sun's setting, let's go ahead and head over to the new base, which is basically what I've been working on while streaming during the week. Um, like I said, I really haven't done too much, and the reason why I made the Atomic Disassembler mainly was because it was a big major time saver. Uh, the fact of it being able to break a lot of blocks very quickly is especially dirt in this case very very useful and I needed it for leveling out some land now if you're holding this in your hand and you have this which is also uh, being charged with uh, power you know RF and all that stuff uh, if you hold it in your hand and you push in which is the default it'll bring up a little uh, you know uh, mouse menu like a, a, a menu wheel or something of that what it, I think it's called a menu wheel uh, and you can select different modes and all you got to do is click on the one that you want while holding in so there's different modes, and off does absolutely nothing. Will not break anything. Even grass. I don't even think you can hit a mob with this. 
Uh, you got the normal mode, which is I was using there just a second ago to break the dirt that quick. Uh, each of these uses a different amount of power as well. Uh, this is also a very overpowered tool in my opinion, but it is so useful. It is very, very wonderful. Uh, and then you also have the fast mode, which breaks things like cobble and stone almost instantly. You have the vein mode and an extended vein mode. Um, now, vein won't go as far, and then extended obviously does a little bit more. It also works on just about anything. And has a really amazing new effect that when I first saw that, I think I flipped out for probably about the first hour. Now, this works on just about anything, including leaves and trees. Now, I'm so sorry to do this, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back and get that a little bit later, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> very useful. Promise I will make sure not to leave floating blocks. I know it bothers some people, uh, but I will definitely do that. As far as the uh, stake of this video, I do want to try to make this a little bit more uh, streamlined, if anything. Also, as an example, baby little skeleton. Yeah, that's about how powerful this thing is. Uh, now... It wasn't really the fact that we were on that mode. Any mode of those will do a pretty decent amount of damage. One shots creepers, two shots zombies. I think it one shot skeletons and spiders as well. And then I think two or three hits for an enderman. I haven't really killed that many endermen. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was running up here and you guys are probably like, whoa. Yeah. So this is the base everyone uh this is what i've been working on while streaming on twitch during the week and like i said if you guys want to come hang out and just kind of chill with us while we're doing some building and work on uh some things off camera then this is definitely the uh or that is definitely the place to do so and this is what we've been working on so this this is our base now why this shape why this size why like this well i made this perfectly inside of a four by four chunk area so each of these outside areas here can actually be you know if needed chunk loaded and these are all individual rooms and then we also have the interior courtyard here which is a two by two chunk so it's very very nice i'll show you guys a little bit around on the inside we haven't done a whole lot and we got a little bit of some farms going out here some food we have a tree farm and an industrial hemp farm for some, you know, string as well as some other building blocks and stuff like that. Now, you'll notice I got some of these sweet berries. I've been trying to grow these for a couple different reasons. Ooh, got a friend around here somewhere. I've been trying to get this place all nice and lit up and everything, but definitely taking a little bit of uh, work on that. I still got to do a little bit on the inside here, so... Uh, I'll run you around real quick, and I've been looking at maybe using these here, which is the uh, candle with a double iron arm. If you type in, in this pack, there is a lot of candles for uh, lighting and such. Uh, this is the one that I'm currently using, which is some iron nuggets with some candles. There's a couple different ways of getting this uh, chunk of wax as well. Now, you can get it this way uh, by crafting two lumps of wax, but you can also get it with pig fat, which is literally just crafting... Uh, pork chop with, uh, you know, in a crafting square. Uh, pretty easy to actually get. Uh, you can also do the lumps of wax, which is why I have the sweet berries. You can just smelt those to get, you know, one lump of wax. Now, each of these will sometimes net you one, sometimes it'll net you more. And in this case, we got two. So that would make, you know, enough for, uh, what, one candle? Yeah. Well, two. It crafts two. It's a, yeah, you know what I mean. So that's what I've been using as far as that. We got, uh, you know, got our hallways here. We got this interior hallway that goes all the way around. And each of these rooms are basically designated as their own chunk. They're not quite finished yet. We'll probably change out some of the blocks a little bit later on. Uh, but I was just, <laughs> I was really unsure, like, you know, how much resources this was going to take to actually build this massive, massive area. As you can see, we... Got some very minimalistic uh, materials here, like oak planks. We got the stone bricks. I laid this whole thing out with cobblestone at first. We got the hempcrete, which I do believe still prevents mob spawns, uh, which is pretty much, you know, these, these blocks here from immersive, and this is concrete. Uh, this does not give you a speed boost, but like the hempcrete, I believe it keeps mobs from spawning on it, or regardless of light level. So I think that's a nice plus. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, each room has its own little, uh, you know, chunk that it's in, 
and we have that going all the way around. Now the outside is made with this uh, you know, light gray terracotta. If you're wondering where I got the terracotta from, we did a little bit of uh, exploring while on stream as well. And we, we did find this really cool island. This is a uh, origins biome. So if you're familiar with like old alpha versions of Minecraft before Minecraft ever even released, uh, this this might bring back some memories. It definitely does for me every time I'm finding those. But uh, you'll see here, we got this nice little Badlands biome, uh, biome, which is you know what it's called now, I guess. It's Badlands uh, instead of a Mesa, but I still call it Mesa at times too. So if you hear, then you know what it is. Uh, but this is where we've been getting our terracotta from. And I've just been uh, filling up some treated wood uh, crates, basically bringing them back so that way we can make things like the terracotta shingles here, which is, I'll show you guys. I'm trying to trying to go quick so I can show you guys. If you're really curious, some people like uh, going in depth like this. It's basically just two pieces of terracotta like that. And uh, it makes the shingles. That's from Quark. So, and then we got the light gray, which I've been using uh, flowers with the enrichment, and uh, that gives us doubles our uh, our dye. The outside, on the other hand, is made out of these from Structurize, which is a very amazing, wonderful roof block. Uh, there's a lot of different colors as well, but I went with the default, which was not that bad to go with. It's just some brick, sticks, and some oak planks. Makes you eight. And I still got a lot of these left, so very nice stuff. Uh, but basically, we got that going. I've been doing a little bit of work, and here is going to be our storage room. We got some nice skylights on both sides. This room being a little bit larger because obviously it's going to be for storage. Uh, right at the moment, it's not super fancy, but we got some gold chests that we made because of Iron Chest mod, which is wonderful. Uh, if we just type in chest, uh, these give you a lot more storage just by upgrading a regular chest with some iron. And then after the iron chest, you can use the iron chest, right clicking on the iron chest. Uh, shows you the recipes you can use it in if you did not know that. And in the next step, you can uh, pretty much upgrade it to gold. Or if you have the access to silver, you can upgrade it to a silver chest. And then from gold, you can go to diamond. From diamond, you can go to either obsidian or crystal and make it uh, max size. I I think these are the actual same size as a diamond chest. They just have some other nice uh, traits to them. Like this one, you can kind of see the items that are stored inside of it. And the obsidian one is blast proof, basically. So very interesting stuff. And we got some nice things. We got a little bit more organized. We got wood, mob drops, plant stuff, ingots and important items, random blocks, more random stuff, and then some empty ones as well. I also made some storage drawers, so if you're unaware of how these work, these are wonderful. These store a, a large amount, I think up to a 64 of a, uh, 64 stacks of a single item. We already got filled up with cobble, uh, dirt, and then I got some of the other items, and uh, we'll definitely be using more of that as well. So the uh, courtyard looking very good, and I went ahead and made this up here as well. I'm going to make a better way to get up here as well. Uh, but this is eventually going to be where we're going to be placing the like control center for our crafting hub. So I'll have access to all of our crafting underneath and everything like that. And we have a very nice view of our courtyard, which I love very, very much. I, I do need to figure out what I'm going to do about the mobs up here. <laughs> I could put some lights and all that stuff. And yes, you see my windmill over here. Just really, guy, I'm explaining stuff, bro. Oh, he had armor on. Uh, you see my windmill just kind of poking. Obviously, it's got some magical wind bl uh, windmill blades because it still likes to work, regardless of the fact that it's uh, pretty much surrounded by blocks. Uh, but yeah, looking pretty good. Also, we did a little bit of Batania, so if you guys are curious as to what this is, this is Living Rock, and it was pretty easy to make. A little bit of water and the Petal Apothecary here, which is... Uh, very simple to make, and you don't need to go through anything else. You just need to grab yourself a petal from one of the Batania flowers in the world. And basically to do that, I'll show you guys, you just take any of the flowers, put it in a crafting tour, you get two petals out of it. Any type of cobblestone slab and cobblestone will give you the petal apothecary. Use a bucket to put some water in and to make the pure daisies, which is those over there, um, which is for making that. All you need is the white flowers, which I do believe I did pick those up when we uh, started. Uh, but let's see. Oops. Daisy. Pure Daisy. So you'll need the white petals here. You'll need four of them, uh, which is the mystical white flower here. And you tell us four of the petals inside of the uh, apothecary when it has water in it. 
and then throw a vanilla seed in it and it'll make you a pure daisy. I made eight of them, so that way we could uh, try to craft up you know, plenty of this stone a little bit faster. Uh, and the way this works, I will go ahead and show you guys if you're very curious. I know this is like such a catch-up episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying, but I really want to explain this stuff for everybody so that way they... You know, they know. Some people, you know, jump into this kind of new. They don't really, uh, they don't really know this stuff. And I try to do the best that I can possible to, you know, try to explain as much of this. Do I not have any stone? Now, normally, you, you would use eight. I thought I had more. Uh, we'll, we'll just demonstrate with two. Uh, but basically, you can surround one of these. And you can, you can even get the floating variants of these eventually as well and stack these on top of each other and going all the way up. Um, but yeah, we don't have things like building wands or building gadgets in this, which would make this, you know, relatively easy. I'm looking around because I thought I saw a creeper over there. I think he's at my base. Uh, but basically, just place these down right next to it. And you can also do wood as well. It makes, uh, living wood. Uh, this is how we would get started in the, uh, uh, Batania mod here. But you'll see the little particle effects around there. And then all you gotta do is just wait a minute. And eventually it will, uh, you know, do some stuff. It'll change. And it'll turn into a uh, living rock. Just give it a second. And then what I've been doing is this whole thing. I've been setting it to extended vein mining. Which, by the way, I would note if you make this. Uh, make sure you, uh, you know, change this. You know, when you're not wanting to vein mine. Because you might break everything. Like, this vein mines the roof. It veins mine any block you hit that's connected to it. <laughs> so be very, very cautious is all I'm going to say. So yeah, this takes a little bit of a... You know, a minute or so, and uh, you'll you'll notice the transformation completely uh, by, you know, being a completely different block by the end of the process. Uh, it's a very cool thing. I think it makes a very wonderful looking block. Oh, there it goes. Right as I looked away. And then, uh, boop, there you have it. And two more living rocks. So, today I do want to go and jump into some stuff. These next couple episodes, I'm going to try to do a little bit more speedy stuff. Uh, we're gonna see how that goes. It's something I'm not entirely used to doing, but we're gonna, we're gonna definitely try our best out here. Now, let me go and look through a few things. Oh, there we go. I, today, want to show you guys the nether. I have not been, uh, I've been saving that for you guys because, well, you know what? I love you guys a lot. I wanted you guys to see it firsthand with me. So, let's go ahead and make up the few things that we are going to need, which is a flint and steel and our obsidian. So you'll notice I still got my golden hoe, which is indestructible. Also, there is another tool and an item I would like to make, uh, which is the better paxel, which is a uh, reinforced obsidian paxel. And we might try to work on that here today. Now, you're probably wondering where all my stuff is. Uh, I do need to get some more obsidian for this as well. In order for this to work and uh i do want to put this portal not in my base i don't really like the sound i don't like hearing the whoop 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 um uh by the way this mountain is amazing <laughs> i would show you guys here on camera but you guys can pretty much see a good portion of how amazing this this mountain is just by you know looking at it and i'll show you guys that side which you probably saw it a little bit earlier on in the video and then there's even this side of the mountain, which has this really amazing overhang. And then, like, this kind of goes in here a little bit. It is it is a gorgeous, beautiful mountain. Very, very nice. Uh, so I think what we'll do for the time being, and we can move this, obviously. Let's just go ahead and set up a, a vanilla portal right here. Now, I know everyone always bugs me about this, but you know you can make these different sizes, right? I, I'm very much aware. Uh, I just... I'm cheap. Alright, listen. I'm cheap. I'm cheap when it comes to stuff like this. Let me be cheap. Everyone gets on me about conserving resources. That's one of the ways of doing it right there. Even though we can get obsidian super easy, but yeah. So, uh, there we go. We are now, currently, we are in the nether of 116 version of minecraft some very interesting stuff uh now there's some things that we really need to you know be very cautious about like these piglins and stuff like that i'm pretty sure they're not going to be too happy with me because i'm not wearing any gold uh but there's a lot of reasons why i actually wanted to come here and one of those big reasons is 
that right there. I need some glowstone, guys. I need glowstone for some better lighting. So we're going to utilize our vein mining aspect to go and pick up glowstone a lot easier. Also, maybe even a little bit of this quartz. Even though it would be better hit it with fortune, but yeah. What is this? <gasps> oh, blank stone. I want some blank stone. Oh, I want some blank stone. I'm going to have to come back and get some of this a little bit later on. I want to do some building with this. I think it would be great. Also, basalt. I really like the basalt. A lot of these new blocks I'm, I'm like I'm in love with. Love the colors. I love the textures. Just very nice stuff. I don't know if I can get that. So this doesn't look like the best nether spawn in the world to be 100% with you. Also, the sound of the uh, nether rag breaking now. Oof. Yeah, this doesn't look... This doesn't look as great as I would, you know, hope for a nether spawn, to be quite honest with you. Now, you might be wondering what this blank stuff is. This is from Quark. That is basalt. Oh, no, it's not. It's voidstone. I thought that was basalt. Pretty sure it added in basalt, but I guess it's called voidstone now? Or is there a basalt as well? Basalt. Oh, wait. Oh, because that's the bas... Oh, that's... So it probably... This... This was, yeah, cork basalt. See what right there it says under void stone? Because vanilla added in a basalt, he probably went ahead and changed this to uh, be called void stone now, which is, you know, not a bad idea. It kind of makes sense. I get it. I don't mind. I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's go and do a little looking around. I want to see what's up here real fast. Got to be careful. If these guys start attacking me, that's one thing. I'm not entirely worried about it because I, I can probably one-shot them and everything. But I was kind of hoping to see if we could find, like, another fortress, obviously, just to kind of get us started a little bit better. A lot of people always like getting onto me about marking my portal as well, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty well-versed in, uh, you know, my travels. I very rarely do get lost. I mean, come on, guys. I really... If I get lost, usually it's because I'm, like, messing around with something else and I'm just joking around or something like that. It is very rare that I end up getting lost, so. I'm not too worried about it. In my mind, there's there's always, like, a little flag that gets placed. So every time I move, in my mind, there is a mental tracker. So when I, when I look this way, I know, you know, behind me to the right is my nether portal. So there's always like this mental track in my mind. Every which way I turn, uh, I always kind of keep in mind where that one position is from where I am. So that's one of the reasons why I hardly ever get lost. <laughs> I do the same thing when I'm out mining, you know, in my own caves and stuff like that. Even with all the twists and turns. Yeah, that's one of the ways I never get lost. But I also remember like little landmark areas and stuff like that. So the, the Nether 116, I actually uh, have grown to really enjoy it. When it first kind of uh, came out, wasn't as big of a fan of it, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but like I said, slowly but surely kind of growing on me. Now, what is this? Biomes of plant Nether Crystal Block. And then there's these little Nether Crystals. Let's grab some of this. I don't know what this is all about, but... Uh, use on it. I guess it's just to make the crystal block. Very interesting pink block. Very interesting indeed. I'll have to come back here and get some stuff, but I'm not going to spend all day in here because I know some people are like, well, I've seen a lot of this. I wanted to see if there was anything too... Oh, wow. <laughs> too crazy different between uh, this and... They even do little particle effects. Pretty cool. Wow, that's loud. Uh, I wanted to see if there was like any different biomes and stuff. I think think maybe biomes of plenty does a little bit i oh this is definitely different yeah this is a, called a crystalline chasm uh, i'm assuming this is a biomes of plenty it's kind of pinkish and everything this is very interesting all right cool 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 well i'm not seeing a whole lot around here i'm not gonna go we're not gonna go delve too far into that i'm gonna kind of peek this way and then we're just gonna go ahead and head back i'll probably cut real quick and uh We'll head back to the world, and we're going to do a little bit of crafting and maybe make some other machines real quick, and we'll wrap up for the day uh, with that, considering I did a lot. Anyways, uh, yeah, we'll be right back. And we're back at base. Went ahead and offloaded my snuff, so let me run you guys over where I have all of our uh, things kind of set up at the moment now. 
Uh, I was talking about treated wood planks and uh, the crate earlier to move items. Now, the crate is something you can make uh, very easily once you get the coke oven made like we have here. Uh, it allows you to place up to a chest worth of items inside of it, which is just treated wood planks. Um, and you can pick it up, basically, just by breaking it, and it will retain the items inside of it, which is very useful for transferring uh, things around. Uh, treated wood planks, very easy to craft. All you need is the little bit of creosote, so a bucket of creosote with some planks around it to get you your treated wood planks. One of the, uh, one craft of those will make you one treated wood crate, which is what I was using it for. So far, this is how much creosote oil we actually have, so it's a very, very wonderful um, and as far as our osmium compressor is concerned, this is it. Oh, I forgot I did make that. I'll have to show you guys that. Uh, so we did make the osmium compressor as well. Uh, that's what we're going to be using here in just a second. And uh, this right here is the small electrical furnace. I went in an upgraded uh, small electrical furnace. I'll show you guys real quick. Is this little guy right here. And some iron plates, which is I use my hammer with some iron to get the plates. We need five of those. Two conveyor belts, which is very easy. Just a little bit of... You can do rotten leather? Oh, you don't even need it. Oh. Well, I mean, you can cook it up to regular leather. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but the conveyor belts, a furnace, and then the LV copper wire, which is terracotta. A little bit of uh, copper. Very easy to make. And as far as this is concerned, there's this little arrow. If you look at this little arrow here, and it's a little confusing. This is why I'm showing this real quick. Uh, there's a little arrow. And uh, basically, if you click in a direction... It goes that way, right? This is off. It will not work. It's melting speed. So you can see, I didn't even notice this tooltip the other day, but smelting speed, selection, off, one, two, and three. Now with our current setup and our current power generation, one is uh, about all we can really handle. And it still does things you know, relatively well. Uh, it's not too bad. And then it also can auto output on this uh, side. So very, very useful in that sense. Very nice. So uh, no upgrades, nothing too crazy. Just ore doubling uh, at the moment. And to show you guys real quick, there's one. There's two. And then fast speed, which is three. You'll see it's automatically outputting, so it kind of pushes its way out into the chest there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back to one for now, because that does drain a little bit of the power in our wind generator. Uh, now, one thing to kind of fix this is to make an energy cell. One of the things I would love to do. In the meantime, we do need to grab some obsidian, and uh, I will show you guys my mine real quick, because that is one other thing that I have done at the moment that you guys probably have not seen. Alright, also, hey, you. Come here. Come here. That was one hit. Where's he at? Up there. I hate that sound. Two hits. Alright, obsidian. Uh, or enderpearl. Very nice. We got an enderpearl fragment as well. Uh, we can use this to also craft more enderpearls. Very cool. From a mod called Forbidden Arcanus. Mod I would love to jump into and kind of see a little bit about later. So I did make a nice mine. Uh, it is set up right over here on the side. Uh, eventually I'm going to make this a lot nicer looking. For the moment... This is what we got. Nice cobblestone stairs going down in a three by three, and eventually we hit a cave where I've done some mining so far to get some of the resources that we currently have. Uh, I went ahead and picked this up because I want to come over to some lava and uh, we're going to pick up some. Now I know there's that there, but there is another lava pool over this way that I think I already hit on a little bit. Yeah, right here. And what we're going to do. We're going to pop that guy down. We're already on extended vein mode. Now, this tool breaks obsidian faster. Oh, that is loud. It's actually a lot louder. Now, we're not going to need a whole lot. We're not going to grab a ton of this, but... Also, water mechanics, yeah, kind of obnoxious sometimes. Pushing items a lot faster than what we're used to. Also, this is Elder Prismarine. If you look at this long enough, this actually changes colors. I did pick up some of this, by the way. I might do something with it if I can uh, figure it out. So just over the little bit of time that we've been looking at, you see it slowly changing between colors. It is a very cool block. I like it a lot. So just in the time we've been here, it's already changed from like a, what was it, yellow to red, orange to now like this green. It looks like it's going to be cycling back through. Very cool stuff. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and head back up. And oh, come on, come on now. And uh, yeah, so we're going to head back up real quick and we're going to go ahead and work on making a really, really cool tool today. 
I'm going to show you guys. Hopefully you guys like it. We'll be back in a second. All right, guys. I went ahead and grabbed a few things and placed some uh, obsidian in here. Now, this doesn't do anything, and it's just kind of pulling it out, which is really a cool concept. So that way it doesn't really smelt or because it can't really do anything. It just works its way through the uh, furnace here and just puts it into the chest. So we got some of the obsidian dust that we currently have set up. And I think, uh, let's go and call that good for the moment. And we're going to go ahead and put some diamond into our enrichment chamber at the moment. And what this is going to do is do the enrichment process that I showed you to make the refined obsidian earlier. But just to kind of show you guys more a little bit visually what's going on here. Uh, I'm going to go and grab that. We'll grab the enriched diamond. We're going to put this into the slot on the side. You'll see that gives us eight. And then we're going to go and put our obsidian dust into the metallurgic infuser. We're going to let it do its thing. In fact, let's just go and let that do the last little bit there. And we'll need our other machine over here on the side also. And I'm just going to go and grab a little bit of uh, extra osmium to put in there. Because it does go through osmium pretty quickly. And uh, we want a total of seven refined obsidian ingots. Now, we already have one. And we're going to go ahead and put this in here. And then after that one's done, right here, we should be able to put one more in there. And this is going to make some extra. And the reason why I'm going to go ahead and make extra, and I'll probably do this off camera. It, it, the, the, there is a little bit. Actually, you know what? I might not. <laughs> I might not. But if you're interested, you can make up a lot of this. And the reason for this is if you don't like dying in Minecraft and uh, you like, uh, you know, living a lot, I would suggest making the refined obsidian armor. There's a full set of it that you can make, not to mention, it seems you could make it completely indestructible as well. It gives you 12 armor by you know, normal stats, four armor toughness, one armor uh, knockback resistance uh, to just the chest plate, uh, chest plate. That is an insane amount of armor. This thing is also very enchantable. So you can get some very good enchants on a full set of this armor and apply the indestructible to it, and then you'll never have to worry about it. It is it is crazy to think about. Uh, but what we're going to be going for today, and the reason why I don't want to do that is because people like trying to murder me. <laughs> and that's kind of how it is on Twitch. People like to try to murder me, and I, I am completely okay with that. Because uh, we have a form of integration on Twitch that allow, allows uh, the uh, viewers to uh, interact with the uh, what's going on in the game a little bit so very cool little aspect i love to have it adds a lot more fun to the game for me uh but yeah and i think it's a lot of fun for everybody as well uh but anyways so it gives the ability for people to do stuff uh like that and so if i can't die then that takes the fun out of it for me and takes the fun out of it for them but i would suggest if you can a full set of that very good stuff probably just gonna stick to iron honestly uh, but yeah, also, I forgot to mention this. This is dense grit sand from Engineer's Decor. So if we go here, uh, the grit sand. I was trying to type in something to make it a little bit easier, but I assume grit's probably better. Uh, it's just gravel, sand, and two pieces of dirt give you four of it. And it also does not fall. So as you'll notice here, it does not fall like sand and gravel does. So it's very cool like that. Uh, let's grab some sticks here. You'll notice I'm still using this crafting table, which is kind of hilarious, but I like it, so can't really blame me for that, can ya? Alright, so here we go. So we always make sure the uh, pickaxe is in the middle, the other ones don't matter. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So you have to have the pickaxe in the middle, the other ones does not matter. But uh, that gives you the refined obsidian paxel, 15 attack damage, 1.6 attack speed, 3000 durability, uh, really nice still compared to this, but I wanted this for a different reason. Now, I've been picking up the X-Petrified Orbs, which is a little, like, green glowy stuff. So if we go to at Forbidden, uh, in the next episode or so, by the way, we are going to, you know, we're going to get into some more, uh, other stuff. Uh, I just, I definitely needed to get you guys a little caught up for those of you guys that are, not uh, watching, uh, over on, uh, the stream and stuff like that. But, uh, I've been picking up this. In the world which you probably saw me find in the first couple episodes uh and then there's also this one as well which is a little darker version i think i picked that up as well um but basically also i, I think we actually crafted the thing we needed which was literally the eternal stella 
Uh, so the Stellarite piece, which we got from mining, it blew up on me when I mined it. And then four of these, and we found more of them. And then all you got to do is combine it with your pickaxe. And it makes it indestructible. And an amazing Paxel that is indestructible. Now, this has three uses on it. Uh, we could use that and never have to worry about it ever again. I did try this, by the way, and that's why I have it crafted. This does not work, unfortunately, because this thing is not enchantable. So um, I don't think this even works in a anvil because that's just not how this particular item works. I think I don't. Yeah, like it's a it's a crafting thing, and I think it only actually actually it works on pretty much everything. It just yeah, it just doesn't work on that. But um, as much as I want to do that, I am gonna hold off. We're going to keep using this for just a little bit. I would like to do this, but the reason why I'm holding off is because I want to get this enchanted first. I want to get this with efficiency on it, uh, maybe with some fortune, because I usually have a very good chance of getting fortune on that uh, when uh, enchanting it. And check that out. We got that from a mob by the... Excuse me? Get out of here, guy. Is he solo? No, nope, not solo. Friends are outside. <laughs> All right, guys. As much as I would love to keep this episode going, uh, I am very tired. We had the Minecraft Marathon this weekend where we were raising uh, money for the uh, charity Extra Life. And I was a part of the UHC. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with what that is, uh, well, it's a really wonderful and fun event that uh, you know, a lot of the Minecrackers get up. And I was invited to as well to uh, kind of help out and uh, participate in. And I had a lot of fun. But it entailed me staying up, and I'm a little tired as of, the, as of this recording. And I know this video is going to be extra long for you guys, so I hope you guys enjoy it for the Monday. Uh, I might have to end up taking off because I'm—I don't know if I can do another one of these uh, tonight. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So very awesome stuff. Uh, we're gonna try to get an enchanting table set up for this, so we can get this enchanted. I don't know if we're gonna do that in the episode or if I'll do, just do that off camera because that's just vanilla Minecraft. If you guys don't know that mechanic, then I'm. I mean, seriously, you just, you make an enchanting table for Minecraft, you know, <laughs> you make this thing right here, you surround it with, you know, bookshelves at least one block away, and then, you know, you put lapis in the table, make sure you have the plenty amount of experience on your player and enchant. So there you go. Just a little quick one, two, that's what we're going to probably end up doing, or at least I'm going to try to do off camera. Um, I got to find more leather, basically, and maybe some more books and stuff. Yeah, there's bread. I got to do some lighting and everything. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video very much. I appreciate the uh, the amount of support on the new series here. And uh, seeing a lot of you guys make your way over to watch the stream and hang out with us while we just do a little bit of, uh, you know, chill building and off-camera work. Uh, to kind of make the series here on YouTube, you know, a lot nicer in my opinion. I'm kind of thinking that this uh, whole thing might actually work out pretty well. So anyways, thank you guys again for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope to see you guys back in another one very soon. Until then, goodbye.